CBS 8's Jenny Day. Welcome to Around San Diego. I'll get you caught up on a week's worth of news and look ahead in just 30 minutes. We begin with San Diego sports. What a time for the Aztecs. And we just celebrated Padres opening day. We truly have an incredible roster, so the expectations, they are high. Many San Diegans, including myself, believe this is our year to go all the way. It really brings the whole community together. I'm born and raised in San Diego. I've been here through the dark times when the stadium was pretty empty. So I'm so excited for the season. The Aztecs are going to win the national championship and the Padres are going to win the World Series. I love it. It's simple. San Diego all the way and this is our year. Uh, yes, the vibe was just electric out there. So NJ bet just named Petco Park the best ballpark in the US. Can't blame them. Saturday's game comes with a block party in East Village and then Sunday is the first kids fest. First 40,000 people will also get an opening series hat and with some new rule changes games are set to be around two and a half hours now instead of three. Yeah, and if you're a Padres fan, you either love them or you don't. There isn't much room in between. We're talking about the brightly colored City Connect Padres jerseys and merchandise. The merch has been selling out, and that's because it's resonating with some fans even across the border. CBS 8's Regina Urita talked to the CEO of the Padres about designing an entirely different jersey for the team and our fans. You've already seen them. They have a bold new color scheme with a new font highlighting America's finest city and the baseball team it represents. The Padres Baja inspired City Connect merchandise. Can you kind of talk to me about what City Connect means? Yeah, absolutely. So City Connect's a program with Major League Baseball, the 30 Major League Baseball teams and Nike to create a uniform set that is reflective of the culture and really cool things about the communities that the teams play in. It's intended to blend two cultures, Tijuana and San Diego, into one. The colors, design, and font are a nod to the coastal community, going from Oceanside to Imperial Beach to south of the border. The pink and yellow are also meant to accentuate the region's sunsets, as well as San Diego's surf and skate culture. We're two cities, two countries, but we share one team, and Baja California and Mexico is a big part of our fan base. I recently spoke with Pondre CEO Eric Gruppner and asked him how the players have responded to a uniform that is far from the traditional uniforms you see around Major League Baseball. City Connect, I think thanks to Manny Machado, it looks so good on him. Juan Soto, really excited this year. We'll see Fernando Tatis Jr. on the field wearing City Connect for the first time. It might not be for everyone, and it certainly isn't what Manny Machado would usually wear when hitting a home run on the field. But City Connect merch has been flying off the shelf since announced in 2021. Oh my gosh, the colors are great, and it's fitted. The hat fits great. Nothing I would wear, personally. Some critics have called the City Connect merch too aggressive. Others even comparing the colors to an Arizona iced tea can. But for fans living in San Diego with deep roots in Baja, these jerseys resonate with them. The bright colors represent presenting how bold Mexican fans can be and emphasizing their pride for the game and where they come from. I like it because it, you know, it represents our city, you know, uh, the, the whole color scheme and all that stuff, the, how it re represents like the Hispanic heritage and all that stuff. I thought it was really cool. Latino Padres fans have already rushed to team stores this season just to buy the jerseys before they sell out. What do you think about them? And the I love scheme? all the great colors. They're my colors. <laughs> I really want to get a hat and a jersey. After hearing several fans convince me of why City Connect uniforms are the new brown and gold, there was only one thing left to do. Try on some merch <laughs> on myself. Regina Yurita, CBS 8. Yeah, they look great. So as part of preps for opening day, the city of San Diego is also moving homeless encampments. The city had crews out this week clearing the sidewalks leading up to opening day. This comes as the city has proposed an ordinance that would ban camping on public property and sidewalks. The Lucky Duck Foundation says safe villages could quickly house hundreds of people using large pop up tents. A city un owned underutilized parking lot in Balboa Park is being looked at as a potential site. 
we're fully prepared to be a, a constructive and a collaborative partner with the city to activate that uh, that property and others to provide those immediate pathways off the street. Yeah, city leaders visited the lot in January, but it's unclear when a safe village might be going there. Yes, so exciting for San Diego sports. The San Diego State Aztecs basketball team, speaking of, is in Houston ahead of their first ever Final Four appearance happening this weekend. This was the moment that their charter bus dropped them off at their hotel. They were met with cheers from fans and the SDSU band was playing the school fight song. The Aztecs will be taking on the Florida Atlantic Owls. Now, as mentioned, the San Diego State Aztecs do have a chance to continue their historic run this Saturday. Devoted fans have already booked flights to see the game in person. I myself am a local and a proud Aztec, so we are all rooting for you. Don't forget, the game starts at 3 p.m. on Saturday and will be broadcast live right here on CBS 8. Evelyn, William, Holly, Catherine, Cynthia, Mike. Yeah, tough national news this week. The city of Nashville remains in mourning after Monday's mass shooting at a Christian elementary school. A candlelight vigil was held to honor the six victims of the rampage. First Lady Jill Biden and singer Cheryl Crow, who calls Tennessee home, were all in attendance. Several city leaders spoke to the packed crowd at a park thanking first responders. Meantime, people are paying their respects at a growing memorial outside of the gates of the elementary school as well. Mourners have placed flowers, balloons, and even stuffed animals there at the site for those young victims. Three children and three staff members were shot and killed on Monday. We are learning more about one of the victims, Catherine Kuntz, who Nashville leaders say may have confronted the shooter. Catherine Kuntz was on a Zoom call at the time the shooter entered the building. And the witness told me that Catherine Kuntz heard the shots ended the Zoom call immediately and abruptly left that meeting and left her office. Yeah, police are still investigating why the shooter broke into the school and opened fire. Now, in the wake of the Nashville tragedy, President Biden is renewing pressure on Congress to ban assault weapons. Even before this latest shooting, polls showed that most Americans are not satisfied with the nation's gun laws. But some Tennessee Republicans want to shift the conversation away from guns after this shooting. This does is highlight uh, some of the mental health issues, the mental health crisis we have in this country. The tragedy that happened in my state was the result of a depraved person, somebody very, very sick. How much blood must be spilt? How many children must be killed until we do the right thing? Yeah, according to the Gun Violence Archive, which tracks mass shootings, there have already been 38 in the U.S. during the month of March alone. Well, Supervisor Nathan Fletcher says he will resign from the Board of Supervisors at the end of his medical leave. This new development comes as a new lawsuit accuses him of sexual assault and harassment. The woman accusing him is a former San Diego Metropolitan Transit System worker. CBS 8's Jesse Pagan continues our coverage. The 26-page lawsuit filed with the Superior Court of California in San Diego County names the plaintiff as Grecia Figueroa. Because of that, CBS 8 is naming her. The lawsuit claims Fletcher started flirting with Figueroa in February 2022 by sending private messages on Instagram, saying things like, quote, home alone, no wife and kids, and, quote, I have a closet, no one would see us there. According to the lawsuit, the two met in May of last year for a drink at a hotel where it claims he, quote, put his hands on her and kissed her. The claims say Figueroa insisted they stop and she went home. Figueroa worked as a public relations specialist for the San Diego Metropolitan Transit System. At the same time, Fletcher served as chair of the MTS board. The lawsuit describes another encounter in June of 2022, claiming Fletcher met with Figueroa in a conference room after an MTS committee meeting and, quote, put his mouth against hers, began to grab her breasts through her clothes. Ms. Figueroa pushed him back. The lawsuit claims Fletcher sexually assaulted Figueroa a second time in December 2022, quote, grabbing her breasts underneath her blouse and pulling off some of her clothes. 
In a statement, Fletcher's attorney says in part, quote, the allegations are false and are designed to drive headlines and not tell the truth. The simple truth is that Ms. Figueroa pursued my client. Their interactions were consensual and Mr. Fletcher does not and never had authority over her employment. In a separate statement, Fletcher says in part, quote, I have not done the things they are alleging, but I did violate the basic trust and loyalty of my marriage and set a terrible example for our children. My wife has done nothing but love me completely and without reservation, and the blame for allowing myself to be in this situation rests entirely on my shoulders. Yeah, that was our Jesse Pagan there reporting and Figueroa was fired from MTS last month. The lawsuit also claims retaliation. An MTS spokesperson tells us an outside law firm is now investigating and Fletcher resigned as board chair Wednesday night. Well, Governor Gavin Newsom just signed a bill into law that will allow California to penalize oil companies for price gouging. The bill was introduced last week and the California Assembly passed it on Wednesday. The bill will give the California Energy Commission the power to collect data from oil refineries and fine them if they are making too much profit. Well, we are also keeping a close eye on the work being done to repair State Route 78 up in Oceanside. Earlier this month, a sinkhole forced the closure of westbound lanes while Caltrans makes emergency repairs. These are newly released photos. One shows the damage done to the old broken pipe and the other shows the new pipe. Westbound lanes on State Route 78 have been closed between College Boulevard and El Camino Real. Repaving and lane striping work is scheduled for this week. However, the pavement must be dry to get it done, so our wet weather has pushed things back. And really, those back-to-back -back storms have been making potholes worse across San Diego. City officials say they're seeing an increase in repair requests, but the recent storms are causing roadwork delays. Right now, there are more than 1,300 cases of potholes in the backlog. About 60 city crews repair anywhere from 100 to 200 potholes a day. When we have wet conditions or cold conditions, it's really hard for us to be able to fill the potholes when there's water in the potholes. Uh, we're not able to have the asphalt stick to the ground. We can't keep those potholes filled. That makes sense. So the city says the filling in those roads will depend on traffic conditions and once again, the weather. And the city of San Diego says it needs a long term plan for the Ocean Beach Pier, deciding between repairs, major rehabilitation or a full replacement. It's been closed to the public since January because of extensive damage. For years, salt water has been eating away at some of the reinforced steel in the concrete. Plus, engineers say the storms that we've had recently have made that damage worse. The city will have a series of workshops to get public input. We do have those details details posted on cbse.com. Well, people living in Chula Vista will now have access to a new high-speed internet provider. Wired Fiber and Chula Vista city officials just announced their new partnership. Wired says it can provide residents and businesses with a fiber optic option, which is the fastest of all high-speed internet. Wired says fiber internet is also sustainable in that it requires less power to operate because it transmits data with light. Well, the Food and Drug Administration has approved an over-the-counter version of Narcan, the nasal spray that can reverse opioid overdoses. Only the four milligram doses have been approved, but other formulas, including higher dosages, will continue to require prescription. Before this approval, the drug was only available by prescription, but many states, including California, created workarounds for anyone to get it directly from pharmacies or a local organization. Meantime, dozens who lost loved ones to fentanyl say that they will keep fighting after a bill cracking down on dealers failed in Sacramento. Alexandra's law would have required courts to warn fentanyl dealers that if they get caught dealing again and one of their customers dies, they could be charged with second degree murder. The parents of 20 year old Alexandra Capiloto from Temecula, who died from a fentanyl overdose, testified alongside Mayor Todd Gloria. Alexandra had taken half a pill of what she thought was Percocet and she purchased via social media. The pill she bought was actually laced with fentanyl and that half a pill caused her to overdose and to die. Yeah, way too many people have a story like that. So opponents say the bill should only target dealers who knowingly sell fentanyl. 
And city leaders in El Cajon are taking steps to tighten the rules and policies surrounding some of the assistance programs designed to help homeless people. The city council unanimously approved several new recommendations. This includes having motels give a monthly report to the city with the number of rooms used for emergency sheltering, the duration of stays, what provider is using the rooms, and the room rates. The city wants to have organizations that give out vouchers to obtain special licenses by the end of April and create plans for voucher recipients once they leave the motel. When I see an encampment outside of a motel, I, I typically stop my car and try to understand what, why they're there. And nine times out of ten, they were discharged out of a county-run program for violating the rules. Yeah, the approved recommendations will now head to the Planning Commission, still working to confirm when that new policy will officially be implemented. Well, the city of San Diego's ambulance provider, Falk, says that it's taking steps to address concerns about long response times. This comes as many service providers work to overcome staffing shortages and high demand. CBS 8's Rocio De La Fe rode along with Falk crews to find out what it takes to get the job done and how they are working through these challenges. As a primary EMS provider for the city of San Diego, paramedics with Falk respond to a high volume of calls on a daily basis. I got a ride along to get a first-hand look at what it takes to save lives. It's hard to keep up with it sometimes. For paramedic supervisor, a bit nader, responding to calls is only part of the job. Try diversity, uh, sharp. Nader and the rest of the men and women at Falk also provide life-saving treatment to San Diegans, tourists, and in some cases, migrants. Nader says it's a high-risk job that can be physically strenuous. Harder than it looks, right? I know. <laughs> now imagine a real person. And I at know. times, involve life yep. or death situations. While riding with Nader, I saw what it takes to respond. I went out with Cruz as he took one woman to the hospital after suffering a medical emergency and saw how they worked to clear this crash on the 163. Metro Medic 10 will be available to me non injury. Falk and other ambulance providers across the nation are facing an EMT and paramedic shortage. There are uh, issues with response times, and it's, it's been a challenge. Earlier this month, Falk's managing director told CBS 8 they've made progress in hiring, bringing on 38 new paramedics since November. It comes as the city wants to make changes to Falk's contract as a result of longer wait times. The average response to priority one calls takes just under nine minutes. Under the city's plan, Falk would be required to subcontract with another ambulance provider to increase unit hours for paramedics. The city's public safety committee is expected to hold a special meeting sometime next month to agree on the changes. I know Falk has been doing what they can to, to try to catch up and make sure that they serve the city of San Diego properly. Despite the efforts to cut back on wait times, one major challenge paramedics continue to face is the nearly 15% increase in call volume over the past year, which amounts to about 450 calls per day. It taxes the system. Falk is working to boost recruitment, offering a $50,000 sign-on bonus to paramedics that's paid over three years. The ambulance provider is also working with schools to have EMTs promoted to paramedics. To learn more about what it takes and how you can sign up, visit CBS8.com. Rocio de la Fe, CBS8. Rocio, thanks. Well, a new eight-story, 49-unit apartment building approved for University Heights is coming under fire. A town hall this week focused on how communities can take back control over zoning for new projects. But the city says that because regulations have been updated to provide San Diego more housing, this project is already green-lighted. Many residents in University Heights say they appreciate the need for more affordable housing, but question whether a project of this scale is the best solution seems out of place and so I just think they just need to be more thoughtful about how they go about doing it. I'm big on housing but I'm not sure that the infrastructure is there to support it. Yeah for more information on providing public input to the city go to CBS8.com and click on the online version of this story. 
Well, new statewide legislation that would increase protections for renters is now gaining support here at home. This comes as San Diego is eyeing new rules that would keep more tenants in their homes. Senate Bill 567, known as the Homelessness Prevention Act, would close current loopholes on a statewide level for no-fault evictions and also narrow the cap on permissible rent increases now at a 10% annual. We need to pass SB 567 to keep people in their homes and to protect tenants, not just me and my family, but families all, all over the state of California. Well, the city of Chula Vista passed the strongest renter protections in the county earlier this month. San Diegans not living in Chula Vista currently lack protection from these so-called no-fault evictions. Well, 40 acres of land in San Diego County. That's what one dad gave his son for his 13th birthday. He posted about it on social media and their story has gone viral. Rapper Sean Combs, Puff Daddy, even posted about it. CBS 8's our Anna Laurel went to Boulevard just about an hour east of our newsroom to see what they're going to do with all of that land. We're not just out here in the middle of nowhere. Look how close we are to the border wall with Mexico. Now, when we were driving out here, all I saw were a bunch of boulders and a few trees. But when Fahim Muhammad came out here, all he saw was potential. We see clear space that we uninterruptedly we can enjoy nature. You know what I mean? Especially growing up in the city, a congested city like L.A. When we're out here, I mean, it's, it's totally different. Fahim Muhammad bought 198 acres out here in Boulevard to get away. It's real quiet. <laughs> yeah, this is not like <laughs> Chicago, not like L.A. He lives in Los Angeles and runs a real estate business that buys and rebuilds properties in the south side of Chicago. He says to create a better living situation for the black community there. Based on what's happening with this renovation right now. His company, Oasis Investment Group, even teaches people home ownership. These are people that have had families on government assistance for years, and now they're actually enrolling in courses to learn how to buy their own homes. Fahim says his mom taught he and his siblings how important it is to own your own property and to help their community. So when his son Fahim recently turned 13, he gave him 40 acres. I thought it would be a great opportunity to, to teach him a life lesson about the value of land. And they're teaching other kids from L.A. these lessons, too. So all them regular rocks you picked? They bring inner city kids out here to hike, ride ATVs, and build campfires. You can tell how much their family loves it when I ask them what it's like out here at night. Amazing. It was fun. Amazing. You get full view of the stars. Yeah. It's like because like there's no city air. lights out here, so yeah. you get to no yeah. pollution and stuff like that. So you get to see yeah, like we, clear sky. You can see the all the stars. stars really yeah, it was fun. Thirteen-year-old Fahim has some ideas for his property. You could build like ATVs like around yeah. like, the whole thing. Oh, yeah. That's like yeah. with a zip line yeah, from the dude. mountain. And even though they're right beside the border wall, they've had no problems. Out here, these city kids enjoy their own private open space. Oh, oh, you got fresh water, you got um, clear skies. At night, you can see all of the stars, the moon, the sunrise is beautiful. In Boulevard, this is Anna Laurel for CBS 8. I love that they're all enjoying it so much. Get outside, right? And great example for his kids. Anna, thanks. Well, for many new high school graduates, attending a four-year university directly out of high school may be out of reach for either financial or academic reasons. But a new program launching this summer aims to make a Cal State degree more attainable. The Transfer Success Pathway will allow students enrolling in one of California's community colleges to be eventually guaranteed admission to a Cal State school of their choice, including SDSU and Cal State San Marcos. To qualify, you must meet all of the transfer requirements within a three years time. If more programs like that were available, that would be great. I think that definitely is appealing. It's, it's an opportunity that, you know, not a lot of people get. Yeah, for more detailed information on the new transfer success pathway, just go to CBS8.com and click on the help button. Well, the USS Midway Museum is paying tribute to all veterans who served during the Vietnam War. This week marked 50 years since the last U.S. troops left Vietnam. The museum held a ceremony on board to commemorate the anniversary. It featured several guest speakers. All were directly impacted by the war. There was also a wreath laying and ceremonial aircraft flyover. And with March being Brain Injury Awareness Month, a hero shows our Jeff Zevely 
how exercise, the pure bar workout specifically, has given him a new life. If you're searching for motivation, look no further than a Marine. You can't get nothing out if you don't put nothing in. Power walks and push-ups. You just can't run to it. You got to push your way to it as well. Are just right. two of the ways Pierre Anthony is reinventing his life. Going to combat changes you. Pierre became a Marine at age 18. You took four extended deployments. I did. Tours to Iraq and some of the most dangerous places in Afghanistan led to high casualties. Every single day. I think that that was the bloodiest conflict for the Marine Corps since Vietnam. A bloody conflict that came with thousands of IEDs. Improvised explosive devices. And people say, well, Pierre will figure that out. They call me right on in. I come running with the boys. So we're going to take care of it for you for sure. You're smiling, but it left you with PTSD? It did. It did. Pierre was a master bomb technician who suffered multiple traumatic brain injuries. I am a 100% disabled veteran. I've got first, second, and third degree burns from being blown up and burned. After 21 years of service, Pierre retired from the Marine Corps. You got divorced? I've been divorced twice. He says he needed therapy and found it in a form of exercise called Pure Bar. My name is Pierre. I was in the Marine for 20 years. Pierre was welcomed with open arms with workouts that challenged his body and his mind. This is the movement right here. It took me a while to get there. That's the PTSD kicking in. Bring it up. Marco Vasquez. And up. From the East Village studio helped us raise the bar. I plank every day <laughs> for my bad back. <laughs> it is nothing compared to this. Oh, you feel that burn? Yeah. Nice, nice one. Next up, abs. Now hold that position. Cross your arms like an X on your chest. Again, down two counts. Oh, man. Pierre's lost 30 pounds, but more importantly, gained a loving community. I just now spotted your uh, <laughs> tattoo that says, Psycho number 23, <laughs> lunatic. It is the story of my life. <laughs> Laughter has replaced a lot of his anxiety. I still got it, even at. <laughs> Pure Bar is now sharing Pierre's success nationally. You're becoming the face of Pure Bar. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to respond to that, but just say uh, thank you. <laughs> even if sometimes that face <laughs> Looks like this. <laughs> In the Zevely Zone, Jeff Zevely, uh, CBS 8. Oh, love his success story, Jeff, thanks. There are eight pure bar locations in San Diego County. For more information, visit the Zevely Zone page on CBS8.com. Well, staying on topic, sort of, every dancer's dream is to someday take a ride on the hot tamale train, right? If you don't know what that means, we have one more Zevely Zone for you. Jeff meets dancing royalty Mary Murphy at her Champion Ballroom Academy. So when it comes to dancing skills, let's just say I've never been handed one of these. Well, this is me sitting on top of <laughs> Ted dancing. <laughs> Dance champion Mary Murphy has palled around with Robert Duvall and danced as Julia Roberts' body double. I'm a little starstruck. Uh-oh. I'm just Mary from Ohio. So. Mary from Ohio danced all over the world and is best known as the fiery judge on So You Think You Can Dance. People stop you on the street. What are you most famous for? Uh, <laughs> well, is it the laugh? Well, it's the laugh. The is laugh <laughs> is mostly directed at herself. I'm 52 years old. I'm no spring chicken. As seen in this 2010 interview with CBS 8's Marcella Lee. That laugh and Mary's opinions made her famous. Only the best dancers got to ride on her hot tamale train. And don't you dare tell her which dancer gets a ticket. It's my imaginary train. No. <laughs> I never dreamed I'd ever do something like this. We asked Mary to judge Marcella's cha-cha. Look at her little feet go. <laughs> oh, there she goes. <laughs> 
hot tamale nice, train? Nice, definitely a hot tamale, isn't she? All right, so this is our morning anchor, Eric Connor. Yeah, he needs some help, doesn't he? <laughs> I like his enthusiasm, though. His best move's coming up. Okay, all right, he's saving the best move. Oh, hey! Hot tamale train? <laughs> He's on the platform. He's on the platform. Yeah, yeah. He's got a little Sorry, backpack. Eric. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> Mary is no longer a judge on So You Think You Can Dance. I am not. Okay. I was replaced last year by an 18 year old. <laughs> Her main focus these days is helping San Diegans of all dancing levels to strut their stuff at her Champion Ballroom Academy in Kearney Mesa. Just moving to music does something for you in your life. And we have people from five years old to 87 as our oldest client right now. Mary's dance instructors are ready to work with you, no matter what you bring to the dance floor. <laughs> it's called the Funky Charleston. <laughs> yeah. And he's the star. It sure was nice of Mary <laughs> to dance with me on her birthday. I'm 65. Wow. Just got my Medicare card. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Need I say it? And Mary Murphy. Where are we going? Is one We're hot tamale. Right here. We're on the hot tamale train. The train. <laughs> In the Zevely zone, <laughs> Jeff Zevely, CBS 8. That laugh is contagious. I love that she is in here, here in San Diego as well. Good stuff once again, Jeff. And for more information about Mary Murphy's Champion Ballroom Academy or to book your next dance lesson, just head to CBS8.com. Well, as more customers become interested in green products, reusable stores continue to grow both nationwide and in San Diego. So in this Earth 8 report, CBS 8's Abby Black shares how the owner is making eco-friendly products accessible in East County. Kai's Refills officially opens on Saturday. Everything in this store has been recycled or sustainable, from the shampoos, lotions, to paper towels. We've seen refill stores pop up across the county, and now there's one in East County. Hi, welcome in. As you walk into Kai's Refills, you feel as invigorated as her hand soap. And then this is my favorite room. It is my soap room. The owner, Leanne Littleton, is pumping new energy into the East County. I grew up out here, so I wanted to bring something home. Her home is now Kai's Refills in La Mesa off of El Cajon Boulevard. She has dozens of reusable glass containers where customers can fill them or their own with clean shampoo, conditioner, lotion, hand soap, laundry detergent, and all-purpose spray, among others, and it's all sold by weight. 16 ounces of hand soap, which lasts you a long time. You're spending $8.18. The product is concentrated, so a little goes a long way and lasts longer. It is affordable because you're not paying for packaging. You're not paying, like you have the option to buy glass jars here, but once you do that, you're not going to be buying them again for a long, long time. Leanne built Kai's refills from the ground up with her almost seven-year-old daughter who she named the store after. I was working in nonprofit world. I have a college degree and I was just like, I just want to be with my kid more. And help people be better stewards of the earth. Because I know like refill stores and this whole like eco-friendly movement can be very judgmental. And I hate that. And it's not, you don't have to be perfect. In each room filled with sustainable household products, she has cheeky eco-friendly sayings on the walls. This one says it's only one straw, said 8 billion people. When you hear that, it kind of hurts a little bit. You're like, okay. Kai's Refills joins the ever-growing industry that experts project refillable and reusable packaging sales will reach $53 billion in 2027. And like, I just want to bring people along with me. Like, I just want to be like, come on, let's go. Like, this eco boost to the East County is a journey this mom hopes others will join in cutting waste. Like, let's do something that's fun. I care about the planet and I want to make it accessible to others. For Earth 8 in La Mesa, I'm Abby Black, CBS 8. What a great concept, truly. Abby, thanks for shedding light on that. Well, is the city using poison to kill squirrels near La Jolla Cove to bring a stop to cliff erosion? Bait stations in the area have people living nearby a little concerned. CBS 8's Ariana Cohen talked to some La Jollians and reached out to the city to figure out what's going on. 
This cliff is eroding, but is it due to the rain, squirrels, or both? A La Jolla man says the city is using a cruel method to reduce the squirrel population. However, other people that live here say it needs to be done. I spoke to city officials. Brian Rasheshki was walking along Shell Beach near La Jolla Cove when he noticed these poisonous bait stations that he says are used to kill squirrels. Pretty alarmed when I found that out. That this was not a humane release situation. He says these burrows the squirrels build are being blamed for this cliff's erosion. Very knee jerk reaction, quick solution that puts a band aid on it. They need to look at the geology of the area. The city says Parks and Rec partners with a company to provide pest control for squirrels and other rodents. I just feel really bad seeing the squirrels suffer. I saw one that had been poisoned and it could barely sit up straight, it was shaking eyes drooping. It really has no place in the La Jolla Cove. This should be a pristine ecological preserve. Rasheshki says other methods should be used instead. He worries it could also be harmful to the ecosystem. It's the birds of prey, the owls, the falcons, house pets, cats, any other animal that contacts them can subsequently get poisoned. However, I spoke to other La Jolians like Kenneth Walsh, who says the city should control the squirrel population. It seems like one person, okay, has come along and said, you know, I'm the I'm the guardian of the environment, and really the person who's created this per uh, controversy is one person who's saying that poison, poison is bad. Uh, I, I think the city has some rights too. Uh, poison's never good, but you have you, you always have to balance uh, what the good of controlling the pest is uh, versus what the good to society or, 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 or nature is. The city says in part, quote, in California, ground squirrels can wreak havoc on natural habitats and can contain vector diseases. Chemical management practices are used when other options have been exhausted. To read the full statement, head to CBS8.com. Ariana Cohen, CBS8. Ariana, thanks. Well, now to an update on Indy. He captured the hearts and the attention of all of us when he fell down an abandoned well in Bonita. That was back on February 1st, almost two months ago, and we're happy to report that nine-year-old German Shepherd Indy is finally back home now. His owner shared this picture with us. The retired canine had to have back surgery and has been recovering at an animal hospital in Sereno Valley. He's expected to make a full recovery, but we're told he still needs water therapy treatment. Well, before we leave you, the San Diego Zoo is celebrating the birth of twin Amur leopards. The cubs born several weeks ago have not yet been named and the gender will be revealed after a full veterinary exam. Amur leopards are one of the most endangered species in the world and they're sure cute too. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for staying informed. Be sure to join me each week as I take you around San Diego. Once again, go Aztecs and go Padres. For CBS 8, I'm Jenny Day. Take good care.